Good morning. Thank you for tuning in to the Automation Morning Show for Wednesday, March 1st, 2023. Happy March, everybody. My name is Sean Tierney, and let's go ahead and start off the show by taking a look at what's new in industrial automation. And we'll start with a new press release from Rockwell Automation talking about how they've updated their branch motor control and protection solutions. So this article goes into some detail about what they've done. I want to go over here, though. Let's click on this here. And this will kind of give us a visual of what we're talking about for the product lines. So that is our first story. Next, we'll take a look at a new press release from Yokogawa. And they're talking about a new autonomous control AI service for use with edge controllers. And I totally, when I first read this, I'm like, okay, this is something that runs on a IPC and it is for like AMRs or AGVs. No, it's nothing even close to that. What it is, is it is what they're calling, let's see if I can find it here, their factorial kernel dynamic policy programming learning AI algorithm. That's a mouthful. But this is basically some code, an algorithm that can, you know, actually automate processes where maybe a PID or APC can't, right? So in those very complicated processes where you really always have to have somebody manually get involved in the process and take control of it because PIDs and APCs couldn't do it. This is supposed to solve those applications. Now it comes with a setup service, optional setup service or training, and it's launching first, that's launching first in uh, Japan and then it'll come worldwide. But I thought it was very interesting. And when we get to the edge devices, right? It wasn't an IPC. It's actually their line of PLCs. It's the ERT3+. Plus. So this is a PLC. It also has some uh, edge capabilities as well. But I just thought that was very interesting, so I wanted to share that with you this morning. Next up, we have a new light curtain from Banner, and this one is designed for with a 30 millimeter resolution, so it's for hand sensing, and uh, it comes from 300 millimeters all the way up to 1800 millimeters in length. So um, it also has a 12 meter range, and uh, this is the S4B model. Now I wanted to show you this next picture here. This is one of the longer editions of that, um, taller editions of that unit. So you can get them in uh, pretty large sizes. So uh, that's our first new product. Next up, we have new products from Moxa. And this is really a press release. It kind of goes through the whole process here of developing and what these products are targeted for. But I thought what I'd show you is the pictures of each of the products. So here we have the AWK3252A, right? And this is both an access point, a bridge, and a client. And you can see all the details about it here. You know, it does 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz and so on. Now, they also have an outdoor version of this. This is the AWK 4252A series, right? And so this is also access point, bridge, client as well. But it has that IP, I think it's IP68 rating, yes. So it's uh, weatherproof and designed for outdoors. And then finally, they had one more I thought was interesting in this line. It's the AWK 1151C, and this is just a client only. And I thought that was interesting. It's much slimmer than the uh, the one that's an access point and a server as well. But um, in any case, maybe this is from remote applications where it's always going to be a client, and therefore you can save some costs by just getting a client only model. In any case, I want to share those new products with you. Now, from there, I want to go over to a new application story. Now, I don't share every one of these that come across the web, but um, this one I thought was exceptionally well. Not only did I enjoy the article itself, but there were some great videos in here too, and I really love seeing the processes. Now, in this particular application, um, they're taking old railroad ties, you know, the steel ties, and they actually heat them up in their furnace and then they slice them into three pots. They slice off the top and the bottom. And so that ends up giving them three different pieces. And they make products out of those pieces. One of the products they make are those kind of corrugated uh, steel uh, posts you see that they use for street signs and stop signs and whatnot. So I thought it was really interesting, but I truly love the tour they show as they uh, do a voiceover on what they did. I love seeing pictures right from the facility itself as they're heating up the steel and slicing it up and seeing the steel come out of the furnace. I thought that was very interesting. So I definitely wanted to not only share this article with you, but also share the videos that uh, come. Both of them are good. The interview is good. And then the uh, the promo video we're watching right now, both were really excellent. So I wanted to share that with you. We also have another press release. This one is from BNR, and it's about their SuperTrack product and how it was used in an application you can see right here 
to uh, allow the manufacturer to produce products faster and in smaller batches with less, um, you know, turnover time, less uh, setup time. And, um, you know, we've covered the SuperTrack before. They have some great videos and applications up on their website. But I thought this was interesting because, they, you know, they were doing two things at the same time, trying to reduce the uh, floor space that the system took up, but also be able to run efficiently and effectively run smaller batches of their products. So I thought that was very interesting. And next, we have a new product announcement from Inductive. Uh, it's their Ignition Cloud product. Now, this is actually was uh, posted over at automation.world, but it's uh, from Inductive, and it really goes into how their new cloud product is not going to be software as a service. It's actually going to be more of a pay-as-you-go application. So you will be able to, um, and I think this is for applications. This is one uh one example they give in the article where maybe you have multiple plants that have ignition in them and you want to kind of have a central, maybe you're central engineering and you want to have like a central uh, SCADA package that kind of has a view into all your different plants. And so that's really one of the designs for this. And because it's pay as you go, you don't have to worry about a CapEx to buy a brand new server and a brand new license of, uh, of ignition. You can just do this through AWS and, um, and pay as you go. So I thought it was a very interesting approach. I look forward to talking to the folks over at Inductive again. Of course, we've had them on the podcast previously, and I look forward to talking to them again about all the new releases and products they've come out with. And from there, we go over to our product spotlight of the day. And today I'm highlighting my Compact Logics programming course, Compact Basics. Uh, this is a level one and two edition. Now, this course is still uh, discounted because I need to add some additional lessons to it to bring it to parity with my. Uh, control logics course and then it will be going up the full price but in any case when you purchase this course you get lifetime access and lifetime support so you can ask questions you know you may take the course you may not use compact logics for a couple of years then you may get a new project and you may want to uh, go through the course again we totally support that and you may have new questions the second time around so i check the site every work day for questions i try to answer every single one that comes in and um, the other thing, too, is if you pick up this edition, you will get the next edition, the 2023 edition, which I'm going to start filming this summer, completely free. So check it out if you're interested. If you have anybody, we also do group enrollment. So if you have three or four or five people, we also offer discounts and group enrollment to uh, companies who have multiple people they got to bring in. And the other thing I should mention, too, is if you start off with just uh, Compact Basics, maybe you get the level one and then you want to go to one and two. You can upgrade for the difference in price. As a matter of fact, you can upgrade from any course uh, from the lower level to the higher level to any of the bundles. So we definitely want to protect your investment when you purchase a course or a bundle. You can always upgrade to the next one. And then it even goes for groups. We've done group enrollment bundles where they started the group with like PLC Basics and Panel View Plus course, and then they wanted to upgrade to Control Logics and View SE. We do that for all our customers. So with that, the next up here this morning is the digital newsstand. And we had two newsletters show up today. The first I'll talk about is from Positile. And uh, right here at the top of their newsletter, they're featuring their next gen encoders. And I thought these were really interesting because these actually have a reduced power requirement, which is important if you have a lot of encoders, right, on the same line. If you can reduce the power requirements, that's big, right? And uh, the other thing I thought was interesting, too, is that these don't use the Hall Effect sensors anymore. They're actually using something called a TMR, or Tunnel Magneto Resistance Sensing Technology. And so I thought that was very interesting, too, because it gives them more accuracy, less power draw, and so on. So if you're interested in that, check that out. And then down here, they're also talking about how they have a 3D drawing viewer on their website. We kind of looked at uh, one of these recently on the Festo website. And so now they have one here over at Positile. And over here, they talk about the miniature kit encoders for the Maxon micro motors. Now these always kind of stand out to me because I've always wanted to build like a mini factory to use in my courses. And I, I know companies have them out there, but they're like $10,000, right? Like who's gonna spend $10,000 to learn at home to build a miniature factory? So I will always keep my eyes out for little miniature motors and things like that. And I just thought that was cool. Um, but I also wanted to come down here and, and show you this video here. Um, they make these accelerometers and tilt sensors that are uh, ice, you know, IP69 outdoor rated. And in the video, they're showing how they can be used on excavators. So it's not every day we combine uh, construction equipment with automation, but I thought this was really cool. And you can see the video here, how they put the uh, tilt and accelerometer uh, sensors on the, uh, the actual uh, excavator itself. 
So uh, with that, let's go on to our next story. And this is a newsletter from Automation Direct, volume two for this year is up. And you can see they're uh, talking about material handling. They're also promoting a free pneumatics ebook. And um, I think that's very cool. I actually went in there and they actually have a free ebook also on sensors, which is really good. So you may want to grab that and give that to any new people you have working uh, for you. Um, they also cover some of the uh, WEG washdown duty uh, AC VFDs. They uh, also have a, a, a bounty for application stories. So if you want to detail your application using their products, you can get up to $1,000 for doing that. And uh, they cover some more products here. You can see them on the screen if you're watching. But the last thing I wanted to talk about here was uh, how they're featuring the new Click Plus. Um, it's a finalist for uh, an innovation award. And I just wanted to state that we have uh, made contact with the folks at Automation Direct. And we're hoping to have them on the Automation Podcast and show very soon uh, to go over the PLC lines, at least some of the PLC lines they have. So I did want to throw that out there. So from there, I want to go to our downloads of the day. And today we have a new download from iDeck. In fact, it's version 4.04.01 of their Automation Organizer Suite. Now this software here is what they call their all-in-one software for their PLCs and HMIs. And I did use the contact form on this uh, page to reach out to them to see if we could get somebody to come on the show and podcast to talk about what's new. Because it seems like they got a new configurator and some other new features in it. So it'd be great to let the audience know what's going on there. From there, we'll go over to our publication crawl. And we found several new manuals today. The first two are on the Flex 5000 line from Rockwell Automation. First up, we have a brand new updated user's manual for the frequency input modules. Those are the IJ modules, okay? So 5094-IJ, the standard and safety version of those modules. Now, again, these are not the most popular modules out there, but if you need them, this, this could be a must-have manual for you. Uh, next, we also have a tech data for the Flex 5000 modules. Now, a lot of times these tech datas just have specifications in them, but this one's a little different. It actually has the wiring diagrams in them, which of course are crucial if you're going to wire up some of these modules. We actually don't have any here. Um, we haven't found anybody who could sample us any, but um, I know from wiring up the flex IO and the point IO, these type of manuals are a must have because, um, you know, how else are you going to know where to land your wires, right? So uh, these manuals does do have that. They also have the function block diagrams too. So if you're showing one of your colleagues who maybe is new to the PLCs, you can kind of walk them through how that all works. But I wanted to share those manuals with you. Now, if you are a Siemens Scalance Level 2 Switch user, then uh, there's two new manuals you may want to be aware of. There's a brand new update to the configuration manual for the command line interface. And there's a brand new manual for the web-based management. So again, if you're using the Scalance Level 2 switches, then uh, you'll probably want to grab both of these manuals. From there, we also have upgrade kit instructions for the Rosemont Ultrasonic 3810 series. So if you're going to be doing this, uh, going through the upgrade process, you'll definitely want to have this book. It really goes into the details of the process and the kit. And uh, it's brand new, so we wanted to share it with you today. And now I want to go over to events. Now, today I'm highlighting uh, just a bunch of events coming up from Endress Howe. You know, they're one of the premier names in industrial automation. And they just have a ton of events coming on networking that uh, are all free. These are free online webinars. I think they're roughly 45 minutes each. Um, so we have uh, here you can see Tech Booster for Ethernet IP. They have a Tech Booster for IO Link. They have a Tech Booster for Profinet for Ethernet APL. They have one for uh, Wireless Heart for Heart and so on. So these are free. Um, they're held multiple times over the year starting uh, mid-March, going all the way through early November. So if you have somebody new working at your facility or you just want to brush up on some of these technologies, um, check these out. Of course, this link to this page and all the links we talked about today are at automate.news. And um, I just thought that was interesting. I want to share that with you, and I want to commend uh, Endress Hauser for, uh, for putting these on. That's really great. That's a great service for the community. And from there, we'll go over to what's new and coming today. And today I'll be releasing a brand new podcast uh, that I did with uh, David Peterson over at Control.com. If you remember, last year Control.com invited me to take part in their automation day, and I did a video, PLCs Past, Present, and Future. And uh, since then, I've been looking at a way to kind of return the favor and have someone from, uh, from their side on. And I noticed that David, besides talking about all kinds of PLCs and applications, 
he actually started a series on the Arduino and uh, Arduino-based PLCs. So I thought that was interesting. It's something I want to have the time to, to play with right now. So um, I had him come on. We talk about that. We talk about the new industrial uh, Arduino-based PLCs. We take a look at some of the models he's played with. And then we actually kind of get into a discussion about soft uh, controllers running on IPCs, kind of like the Beckoff PLCs we looked at uh, previously that are really IPCs running the Beckoff uh, PLC code. So I thought it was very interesting. I really appreciate David coming on the show. That will release today around 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. And so you'll find it up here. I also wanted to say that I want to reach out to Rockwell and get somebody from them on about their brand new, you know, the first story we talked about today, their motor control branch circuit protection, because I finally got my first sample from Rockwell Automation. And uh, I have it back here. Let's see if I can bring it up. And this is um, a sample they sent me over. And um, it's uh, on those products. So we can see here, I'll just yank one out. So, you know, motor protection, right? So um, as you can see behind me, my forte, what I spend most of my time on, what I spend most of my years of working on are PLCs, HMIs, um, MES, SCADA, and all that kind of stuff, right? VFD sensors. But um, these are very important parts that need to be in every control panel, right? Well, most control panels where you're going to have motors. So um, I got to reach out to them today. See if I can't get them to come on the Automation Podcast and show to talk to us about this new line, what they changed, what's new and exciting about it. And you know what? It may not be a 5580. It may not be a PanelView Plus 7 Series B or a Flex 5000 rack of I.O., but it's something, right? So I wanted to celebrate getting my first sample with uh, from uh, Rockwell with you this morning on the show. And, um, you know, I just want to thank all our vendors. I mean, if you look at behind me, everything you see behind me, um, well, everything from Siemens and IFM and Automation Direct, Moxa, uh, Wago, and uh, I don't want to forget anybody out, um, SMC, um, Gee whiz, see, now I got myself, painted myself into a corner. Phoenix Contact, Wago, RTA, um, IFM, you know, all of that stuff, Mitsubishi, all that stuff was sampled to us. And so um, there is some stuff I had to purchase myself for uh, for the classes like this L1 and the, uh, the 5380 because I teach those classes. But um, all the other stuff you see up there, right, was all sampled to us. And I just want to just take a moment to say how thankful I am that, to all our vendors who have sponsored, you know, first looks on their products or sponsored, uh, you know, episodes of the automation show who sponsored actually courses, Siemens actually sponsored a whole course on their S7, which, you know, I get to learn so much about that product line from them. And uh, it's just been really a lot of fun learning to use that product. So I just want to take, just take a moment, kind of this is a little sidebar, I apologize, but I do want to thank all the vendors who sponsor us. And, you know, we're always looking for new sponsors so we can bring you more free news and product how to's so with that let me put this guy off to one side here see if i can not break anything <laughs> and um let's see what's next on the show today here and now we'll go on to our question and answer section and i found a new question that came in on one of the forums i follow where a user said hey i got a compact logix it's installed remotely overseas we have no remote access how am i supposed to send them a new program with Siemens, I can just use TIA Portal and make a new load memory card and send it to them. I actually cover that in my course, and I also cover when you can use just a standard card and when you have to use the Siemens uh, card. And uh, we go through the whole process of creating load memory and whatnot. And uh, it's a great feature that Siemens has with their product. So it's like, well, what am I supposed to do with Compact Logics? I don't think I can do that with Studio 5000. And it's true, you can't. Um, at least last time I checked, right? So. Um, you know, first I said, look, we've got to set the stage here. Going back over 30 years, you've never been able to do this. Not since, not, now you can check me on this, but not since they sold, Rockwell sold, double E prom and UV prom burners, have you been able to program from your PC a program on a chip, non-volatile memory chip, and put it in your PLC? Ever since, I mean, I know for sure that there's no way to take the memory card out of the PLC 5 and create, create a... Um, a, uh, put a new program on it using 6200 AI or RS Logix 5. And the same is true for the Slick 500 and for the Control Logix and Compact Logix. It just, just never supported that, right? And so I said, so let's just start from the basics. This was never a feature of the Allen Bradley product line. Um, the second thing I said is, you know, if you have the same PLC, like if you're an OEM, you're making lots of machines with the same PLC, 
then you can just make the card using that PLC and send them the card like you would with Siemens. You just can't make it with the computer and the Studio 5000 software, but you can download that program to the memory card if you have another one of those PLCs. Now, let's say you don't have that exact model, we'll call you distributed. They likely have one as a demo or can get their hands on one from Demos Online and get you that exact model you need. Let's say it's an L18 and uh, you can write the program to it, transfer it to the memory card. And I said, look, you probably want to make sure you set it to load on power up. Now there are ways to get it to load just when the memory is corrupt and you can reset memory, you, you know, through a series of buttons or switches or, or different moves that you make, depending on which model of compact logics you have. But with some of these models, it's very difficult because if the unit boots up and it doesn't find the memory card and the, the memory has been reset, it loads a default program. So um, it's very tricky. I cover this in my Compact Logics course. I cover it on the automation blog. But anyways, I said, let's just take the easy route. Just make sure you set the card to load on power up. And um, that way it'll overwrite whatever's in the memory now with the program you send. And um, I said, look, make sure you truly understand this, go in the manual, dig it out because it gets kind of complicated, especially he didn't share what model he was using. So of course you can't give him the exact steps because you, you know there's so many different models of Compact Logics. So in any case, I says, you know, another option besides that is, um, you know, if you just send them the software, it'll run its computer without a license for seven days. It's called grace mode. And, um, you know, if you have somebody there who's technical and has Windows 10, th that, that might be a good option too. Then you can just email them the file and, uh, you know, he has seven days to download the new program or, you know, he can contact Rockwell directly for a 30 day temporary activation. Um, but I, you know, I'm kind of thinking that since he didn't have remote access, that he may not have somebody there with the you know knowledgeable enough that would have a computer that he could walk through this process. But in any case, so that's the answer. That's the way it is. Uh, we would love, I think everybody who uses Rockwell Automation PLCs and PACs would love them to add the feature like the Siemens has, where you can make the card uh, from your uh, from your software. I think that would be awesome. Even if they released it as a separate free little utility, that would be that would be phenomenal, right? But in any case, I mean, we can kind of do that, right? With the Panel View Plus, that was always a great thing about the Panel View Plus, right? But it's not something they do. And if you really look, and I kind of go through this again in my course, the memory of the S7 is really different than the Compact Logics. I mean, the load memory on the S7 1500, that's on the card. There's no load memory. There's no program stored inside of your S7 1500. It's on that card. So it's a pretty interesting and different way of the, doing it. And, um, you know, if you want to learn more about the S7, check out my course over at theautomationschool.com. So with that little plug there, um, that's our question of the day. And with that, I want to go over to our community corner. And if today is your birthday, I want to wish you a very happy birthday. And if you were born on February 29th in a leap year, then I also want to wish you a happy birthday because there is no February 29th this year. So in any case, uh, I want to wish you all a very happy birthday. Hope you have a great day. Now, if you are connected with me on LinkedIn, which I invite everybody to do, and you have your birthday in your um, profile, then you show up on my uh, connections birthday list. And I want to wish you all a very personal happy birthday, including uh, Nabil, Ricardo, uh, Arshad, and Patrick. That's all we have for today. So happy birthday to you all. I hope you all have a great birthday. From there, I want to take you over to our community website, automation.locals.com. Uh, this is where you can follow everything we do here at Insights and Automation completely free. And if you want to join up and ask questions, answer questions, and send me direct messages, you can do so starting at the price of one cup of coffee a month. And uh, we had a new uh, supporter sign up last night. Thank you very much. And thank you to all our supporters and followers over there at automation.locals.com. And with that, I just want to remind you that if you see a news article or some news in industrial automation that you think I missed, please feel free to send it in using this form here at the automation blog. And if you are a vendor and you want to sponsor the show so we can bring our audience more free news and product how to's, then please feel free to use this form here at the automation blog to get in contact with us. I mean, this is what keeps us going. This is what keeps the lights on and allows us to spend several hours every day preparing and bringing this show to the audience. So uh, we'd love to get some more uh, sponsors. And I want to address why we don't have a sponsor for today's show. Now, um, we, we have a sponsor all lined up to do a four week sponsorship. We're going to do the month of March, but they've fallen behind. They're really busy. They got a trade show coming up. So they've been a little behind in creating the ads and creating the form for the giveaways we're going to be doing. So in any case, I reached out to them last night and said, Hey guys, why don't we just push it out two weeks? 
And they said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So we will have a sponsorship coming up from a major vendor in industrial automation. And uh, we'll be doing giveaways. We'll, you'll be seeing their ads on uh, automate.news and so on. So, um, But that's been pushed out a couple of weeks just because they're so busy. Um, they weren't able to get the ads and form out in time. But with that, I still really appreciate their sponsorship and um, would love to get some new sponsors so we can do even more every day on the show. So from there, I want to take you over to automate.news. That's automate.news. It's not automation.news because that was not available. It's just automate.news. And this is where you'll find all of our uh, links that we cover in today's uh, show and in every show going all the way back to our very first episode on January 3rd. So I think we're on episode 41 or 42 now. In any case, um, all the links are up here at that site and including the links I just talked about, about um, you know, uh, getting in touch with us, following us, sponsoring us, and so on. Now, the first link you'll see every day is a link to the article I do. Once I'm done recording this video and we're done editing it and it's uploading, we begin work on the daily article automation this morning at the automation blog. And this article is where we include a summary of each link and we include the link as well. We include a, try to include a picture of each product we cover. And you'll also find an ad free copy of the daily video here. And this edition of the show comes with automatic English closed captions. So if you're someplace where you can't listen to it, you can actually just read the closed captions. And you'll also find the audio edition of the show. And uh, this goes out to services like iTunes, Google, Pandora, Spotify, and more. So if you want to subscribe to the audio only edition, you can do that there. And please, if you enjoy the show, please consider giving us a thumbs up and a like or a five star review on the audio side, because that really helps us find new sponsors, new vendors to come on, as well as help us grow our audience. So with that, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day today, March 1st, the first day of March, right? And uh, to spend with me to talk about what's new in industrial automation. And I want to wish you all a very happy, safe and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.